Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We've been working on putting a bathroom in our shop. Part of the problem with putting a bathroom in the shop is that you want to do everything on the cheap. It's a shop, it's not the house. You don't need to go be extravagant. So we built our own vanity, we hung our own drywall, we did our own plumbing, we even hired the neighbor's kid to come do the mud and tape. The problem that we kept running into was the flooring. Everything that I could find that was cheap on flooring was garbage, it didn't look good. My wife found this idea on Pinterest where you could take the end grain cuts off of two by fours and you could glue them down to the floor in a brick pattern just like you would tile, like subway tile. We put it down on the floor in my bathroom. It turned out rad. If you want to see how we did it, my name's Alex, follow me into my shop. Let's check it out. The first thing I did was to put a stop block on the miter saw fence. And you can see it, my wood would butt right up against it. This allowed me to make my cuts repeatable so that they would be a half inch every time and they would always be the same size. You can see that I can just quickly butt up against that stop block, make my cut, check the cut, throw it in the bin. I did this 1,116 times. Of course, I later realized that I could be smart and stack two of the two by fours on there so I could get two out of each cut. But when you account for the time that it took with slowing down and stopping to let the blade cool down in order to make sure I didn't dull my blade too much, uh, it took quite a while. I spent quite a while here doing repetitive cut after repetitive cut after repetitive cut. I think the biggest caution I would say is make sure that you're not getting complacent. It's a little bit boring and you can start to zone out and think about other things. You still have a saw in your hands. And done. Is this what insanity looks like? It's gotta be what insanity looks like. I then spent a whole bunch of time organizing the various blocks into the same kind of color and the same kind of green. The concept here being that as we're laying out the tiles by having them all organized in advance, we could grab from the different stacks as we went periodically in order to ensure that we got a diversity of different colors throughout the entire floor so that we didn't end up with a whole bunch of the same end grain or the same colors all side by side. All right, so we've never done this before, but we're gonna try. We've got all the two by fours cut up to a half inch width, and we're going to use a piece of, uh, what do they call that? Furring strips, cut down uh, into small pieces as a uh, guide for our expansion joint. And so we'll just bump, butt right up against that with our wood slats, and then we'll be able to pull that out when we're done to give room for expansion. So. Here we go. Wish us luck. At this point, Emily started troweling out the mastic. Again, we've never done this before, so it's a little bit of trial and error to figure out how to get the right thickness. Now she started to lay out the individual pieces, and you can see how the little furring strip there was used as a guide to keep us from going too close to the wall and losing out on our expansion joint. If you're doing a brick pattern, make sure you save the broken or end cuts off of some of them. They work out perfect to fit in these little gaps where every other row is gonna be a shorter end piece up against the wall. Remember even with those to leave an expansion joint. At this point, you just go get you and Emily and get out of her way. Let her do what she does best. Seriously though, I just played a sport role at this point. You can see me once in a while going and getting an end cut and gluing it down for her, or keeping her stacked full of the different colors of blocks there so that she doesn't have to stop what she's doing with wet mastic on the floor in order to go find a different color block or go check on the kid or go get a drink. Uh, at one point, I think I was even feeding her beef jerky directly into her mouth because she had mastic on her hands. So 
just having somebody there that can run and do those errands for you so that you don't have to get up and stop from uh, being in the groove here really made a big difference. It allowed her to get a lot accomplished without the distraction of other things and potentially running into a position where, you know, the mastic is dried and now she's uh, got to try to scrape that up. So she did the entire floor like the badass that she is. Like I said, get you an Emily. She has made killer progress. One thing that I'll point out here is notice how she's working away from the wall at an angle. That's so that she doesn't back herself into a corner or make it so that she can't reach the tiles around the outside of the wall here. At this point, I needed a transition from where you're walking in from the shop into the bathroom floor. So I just created this out of two by fours. I cut out a rabbit on the one side, and then I put a 20 degree bevel on the other side. It worked out perfect. I just used some masonry screws to screw it down to the cement, and uh, that's all she wrote. Now it's time to sand sand, and sand some more. I recommend some good headphones so that you don't have to listen to a sander the whole time, a good respirator or mask, and uh, some significant patience. I took my time, or so I thought, and found that uh, there were still a couple spots of adhesive that had come up in between the joints, and that was really evident when I did the poly after this. However, I didn't notice it while I was doing the sanding. The sanding is really a preparation for the finish, so if you go a little too fast here and don't do it right, well, you're going to end up with a less than stellar finish. In my case, I didn't care. This is a bathroom uh, in a shop, but, uh, you know, you might care. Take your time. Oh, and don't be afraid to flex your muscles. After sanding, make sure you do a very good, thorough vacuuming. Otherwise, all those little bits will be in your finish. And now I'm going to put the first coat of polyurethane on. I'm just using a Minwax polyurethane for floors. I chose a semi-gloss, choose what you like. You'll notice I'm just going to be kind of sloppy here, just kind of throwing the polyurethane on the floor, trying to get it to soak it up. My goal here isn't for a perfect finish on the floor right now. I'm just trying to get it sealed so that it protects the wood from any water or anything, being that it's a bathroom. You'll also notice that it's taking quite a bit of material to go very little distance with how many times I'm having to dip my brush here. These end grains just soak the poly right up. To give you an idea, we used a half gallon on the first coat. We did four more coats after that with the remaining half gallon. So that first coat took four times as much as uh, every subsequent coat. Man. That first coat is looking good, and it really brings out the color in the wood grain. You'll notice it's still using a ton of material. Just look at how far I can get with only one dip of the brush. It's about two blocks. Uh, it's quite annoying process, but the payoff is well worth it. Look at how great this is starting to look. Now it's time for the big reveal of the shop floor. Keep in mind, it's not done. The bathroom still needs all the base molding put around, the trim put around the doors, the accessories mounted on the walls, and the vanity light installed. But as of right now, the floor is complete, and uh, let's go see what it looks like. I'm here in my socks because it's only been about 24 hours since we finished the last coat of poly. Uh, it says, according to the Minwax directions, it says that you can do light foot traffic after 24 hours, so we're just taking it easy for now. Ultimately, we are super satisfied with this floor. It turned out great. I love the way it looks. I feel like the wood is perfect for a wood shop. Uh, it complements the vanity really well. And overall, super cheap. This is literally six or seven two by fours cut down to half inch each. I went around my shop and found all the scrap that I could so I could get like some pressure treated in here for the different color. And some of it's Douglas fir, some of it's just regular white pine. So we got a good variety of color in here, and I think it looks awesome. We did do a bit of research around this, and we didn't find a whole lot of information on putting this kind of floor down. The one thing that I did know is that being wood, it's prone to warping. And so using a water-based adhesive would be a bad idea. Uh, as far as I can tell, again, I'm not a professional, but... Uh, as far as I could tell from all my research, this Roberts 1407 I was able to get at my local Home Depot, and it doesn't seem to be a water-based adhesive. Uh, we stuck all the wood down on that, and it worked great. 
uh, and I'm really happy with it. It did take us a little bit more than one tub. It took us, uh, we had to buy two tubs, but we only needed a couple scoopfuls out of the second tub. And uh, as far as the top coat goes, we used just the Minwax polyurethane for floors. Uh, again, I did five coats of that, and uh, I'm really happy with that. There are a few pieces where it looks like it could soak up a little bit more, but I'm sort of starting to think that this is uh, more to do with uh, not doing a complete sanding and uh, not taking my time and sanding a little bit deeper. One more tip I'd give to you is, as I was cutting the 2 by 4s I'd come to ones that had like these cracks in them, and when you hit those cracks, they fall apart when you cut them so thin because end grains are pretty weak parts of the wood. I held on to these, and this ended up being really important because when you get to the end of a row that is every other row, you're offsetting these things in a brick pattern, so you need a half tile in order to do that. These pieces I could just take over to the miter saw and clean up right there along that edge, and then they made really good pieces for in those situations, so I didn't have to do a whole lot of specific cuts. I was just able to reuse the scrap that was left over. Ultimately, I'm so happy. Uh, we're into this probably a total of $80 for the 2x4s, the adhesive, and the urethane. I, I couldn't be more satisfied with the way it turned out. And for a cheap little Pinterest project, pass off to my wife, my beautiful wife, for coming up with the great idea. If you like this kind of content, if you're interested in some woodworking, if you're interested in homesteading, we have chickens, we have an anchor, we have a shop, we're always renovating our house. There's different projects going on. Give us a subscribe, hit the bell, check us out, and we'll see you next time.